As a human being, citizen, and businessman, I am painfully aware that these are not the best of times. I know that thousands of our readers are hurting due to the current recession. It is a fact, however, that no matter how bad or how good the times, there is always fishing to be enjoyed. Retro bassin, kicking some ass and wearing rayon jackets. Thinking about Bill Dance, watching these fish prance through my Ray-Ban glasses. Ain't nothing better than 40-year-old lures coming off of Zepco 33. Out on the bass boat, making beer cans float, doing some trespassing. Fishing it old school, this old stuff rules. Welcome to Retro Bassin. Welcome to Retro Bassin. I've mentioned before that I started out my career as managing editor of a fishing magazine by the name of Big Game Fishing Journal. Actually, it started a little bit before that back in college when I was the freshwater editor for this magazine called The Fisherman. Um, unfortunately, like so many print magazines of that era, I think a lot of the different regional branches of this magazine uh, ended up shutting down and the Mid-Atlantic one, which I worked for, ultimately, uh, I think, went the way of the dinosaur. The whole premise of this magazine was basically weekly fishing reports. And as freshwater field editor, I would call up every tackle shop in Maryland and Delaware and basically get the latest reports on where, how, and on what the fish were biting. Well, the internet kind of ruined all that with websites like Tidal Fish, where folks could get reports in real time and not have to wait a week for probably outdated fishing reports. But that got me thinking about uh, the medium in general and maybe some of the things that we are losing as we kind of go digital with a lot of things like fishing magazines. One of my favorite magazines growing up was a magazine known as Fishing Facts. And what I loved about Fishing Facts is it was really a no-nonsense fishing magazine geared toward making fishermen better. Recently, I made a pretty cool purchase online and was able to pick up a complete year of Fishing Facts magazine from 40 years ago. Uh, that's right, I've got every issue of Fishing Facts in 19. 82 and we'll see how it goes this week but i'm thinking about doing a, a little monthly series for the rest of the year walking through a fishing facts magazine from 40 years ago so this month is january and we're going to deep dive into this magazine which is the january 1982 edition of fishing facts all right so here's a copy of fishing facts from january of 1982 for more bass, read the surface expressions. Are you missing the low cost of fun fishing, winter walleye secrets? Test your fishing knowledge know-how. Uh, something else about a muskie. Let's see here. Boost your catches in 82 with our methods. $1.75 for this uh, pretty glorious magazine. Facts for people who fish for fun. always love the ads in these old magazines and, and here's a nice uh, couple page spread so on this side we've got a powerful case for injections the old Suzuki outboards and here we've got this the old uh, Alumacraft back troller 17 that is a nice looking boat so it looks like an aluminum boat with a uh, ton of glorious blue carpet in there so some nice state-of-the-art electronics uh, available here Looks like here's proof that the best can be approved. The Super 62 from Hummingbird. And here's the old table of contents for the old Fish and Facts magazine. And then this is what we used to call the old masthead. So this is where you would list basically everybody that puts the magazine together and also people who sell advertisement and all that good stuff. So... Uh, we've got our editor and publisher, um, George Pazik. Uh, we've got uh, Charles Maltz, the uh, Spence Petros, both the managing editors. 
Uh, we've got old Buck Perry, the educational editor. Uh, Elden Robbins, the boating editor. And we've got a bunch of field editors. Very nice. And who do we have as field editors? We've got Charlie Brewer, Joe Butcher, Dan Gapin, Larry Larson, Al Linder, Ron Linder, Roland Martin, uh, Tommy Portesino, uh, Tom Stewart, and Rich Zaleski. A lot of familiar legend names in there. So this is editorial from uh, George Rizek. It says, 1982 can be your best fishing year. As a human being, citizen, and businessman, I am painfully aware that these are not the best of times. I know that thousands of our readers are hurting due to the current recession. It is a fact, however, that no matter how bad or how good the times, there is always fishing to be enjoyed. It is not basically an expensive sport, thank goodness, but you can spend as much for the equipment as you wish, if that is your desire. Can men or women who are out of work still go fishing? Of course. Life doesn't stop because of hard times and neither does fishing. One of the best things in life. You should make 1982 your best fishing year ever. You should start right now in January to acquire the knowledge and, if necessary, the equipment. You need to make this happen. You are in control of the kind of fishing year you will have in 1982. You can acquire this knowledge by reading and studying, by listening, by observing, and by thinking clearly. <laughs> oh, that is pretty cool. It says, the key to all this knowledge, without knowledge, our finest equipment in the world will only be a waste of money. You probably have another two, three, four months left to study and prepare for the best fishing year you've ever had. And you can do it with almost any kind of pocketbook, according to your circumstances. Read, study, learn, think, prepare, plan, and even the weather won't defeat you in 1982. And you'll find you'll have a set pattern for fishing success that will pay rich dividends the rest of your life. Remember that knowledge is the key to successful fishing. Get all the knowledge you can starting now. George. Pretty uh, inspiring words from 1982 and... I got to tell you, not much has changed in 40 years. That's pretty wild. All right, so moving on from the wise words of the uh, editor, uh, George Pazik, we've got a nice ad from Hedden, the old Magnograph. I'm not familiar with that rod. That's interesting. I've seen the Hedden Pal, but I've never seen this one. Ah, some nice ads from old Hopkins, the old uh, Shorty Spoon. And look at this, the old Lawrence picture perfect, a graph. Is this a paper graph? This might be a paper graph. Ooh, that's old school. But look how detailed that is, guys. Fishing Digest, here we've got a ugly stick rod. It forgives a multitude of sins. <laughs> So here's the first article, a pretty nice spread. It says, are you missing this low-cost, fun fishing? While most anglers are fighting heavy fishing pressure and higher gas prices, veteran small river and creek anglers are just quietly going about their business of catching fish and having fun. By Dan Gapin, field editor. And that looks like Dan Gapin with a really nice river smallmouth, he caught, on some old-school spinning gear. So it looks like this is sort of outlining how to go about fishing a small body of water. I've got a lot of those in Texas, so I'm going to definitely have to read this article. Hot area for stripers. Uh-huh. What is this? Hot area for huge stripers. We are in the Highland Lakes chain. Okay, here we go. Oh, <laughs> speaking of uh, Texas lakes, so this is my neck of the woods. So this is the Colorado River chain. And a lot of the lakes that you see me fishing on this show are in this chain. So starting down low here, uh, we've got Town Lake or Lady Bird Lake. This is the lake that runs through downtown Austin, Texas. Um, following the Colorado up, you've got Lake Austin. Um, I used to launch right around the Austin 360 bridge. And uh, there are some big old bass in that lake. 
Continuing upstream, you've got Lake Travis, which is definitely one of the bigger lakes in the chain. Uh, then you've got, I think this is probably Lake Marble Falls, if I recall. Lake LBJ. Inks Lake, I'm not familiar with that one. And then up to uh, Lake Buchanan. And that's a really cool uh, representation of the Highland Lakes chain. So I've never actually caught a striper in Texas, but I guess they were stocked sometime around 1982. So what do we have here? Unlocking the secrets of winter walleye. Everyone was a lot tougher in 1982. No hut. They were just out in the wild. <laughs> Article by George Pfizer. Ooh, so we've got some nice apparel from Northwoods. Uh, looks like the gang is all there hanging out in their uh, <laughs> vests. A lot of flannel, a lot of vests. So nice detailed uh, article on some winter walleye fishing. Yeah, after 8,000 hours of starting and stopping, we nicknamed the Mariner the One Pool Motor. So there's a Mariner on a nice old school Lund boat. Nice. Okay, so here's an article by Larry Larson, field editor. It says, for more bass, read the surface expressions. When you look across the lake, what do you see? If all you see are trees, water, and some weeds, then you'd better carefully study this article. Huh, okay. Want to find bass quicker on a strange lake? Then study the surface fish finding clues. It says bass and most other game fish uh, usually relate to underwater structure, edges, and cover, but surface expressions can often lead you to subsurface hotspots. Here we've got a veteran angler who checks out a bassy looking clump of pads near a canal emptying into the main lake. He knows a change on the bottom consistency and or depth occurred to allow the pads to grow. This change plus the cover created should attract bass. Huh, very cool. What I love, by the way, about these old articles, notice that it is not necessarily about the lures. I mean, I love lures, but it's about the areas that you're going to be fishing because that's what it's all about so i don't know this rod but that is a pretty glorious frameable ad built to outcast outlast and outsmart uh kunin rods okay never heard of those but that is pretty cool Okay, test your fishing know-how. Planning big uh, fishing in the year 1982? Here's a teaching test to see how well-prepared you really are. Uh, by old Spence Petros, the managing editor. And there is old Spence, I recognize him, holding up a really nice small mouth. Oh, this is pretty cool. So it looks like it's, <laughs> this is like a test. Oh, I'd probably fail this test. So there's a question, and then you've got your choice. Okay, hold on. <laughs> we can see if we can find one that's a good one for the old bass and buds. Okay, number four. Around which type of these weeds would you most likely find spawning largemouth bass if they were all growing in the same lake? A, bulrushes, B, reeds, or C, lily pads? I, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Drop a comment, guys. Let me know. What is the answer to that question? It's a pretty goodie. A lot of musky questions here. I'm going to skip those for sure. All right, we'll do this one. Um, you have a small clear pond near your house that gets pretty weed choked in the summer. Every now and then you see big bass cruising in it, but catching them is another story. You fish at all hours of the day during the summer and just about every lure in your tackle box, but nothing seems to work. There is a condition where these fish will be easy to catch. What is it? Night fishing during the summer with slowly retrieved surface lures? Try ice fishing as soon as the ice gets thick enough? 
fish the first warm days just after ice out, or wait until the weeds die in the fall. <laughs> All right, Bass and Buzz, leave me the answer to that one down below as well. <laughs> oh, that's pretty fun. Oh, it does have the answers here. Okay, so let's see here. Um, what questions did we go through? Okay, so uh, answer number four was B. Reeds grow on a slightly firmer bottom with less silt and muck than lily pads and bulrushes thrive in. The more silt-free areas are desirable for spawning bass uh, when making and tending their beds. Okay, very nice. And let's see, we've got the answer to number 14 as well. C, the time when those big females are most vulnerable and can be reached is very early spring. The first warm sunny days after ice out will find them within range of the shoreline caster and very susceptible to slowly fish spinnerbait, crankbaits, or jig type presentations. Well, I think I failed both those questions on the old uh, bass and quiz. <laughs> Ah, uh, here we go. A nice spread, a uh, little ad here from BASS with the old school BASS logo, by the way. <laughs> That's glorious. Join BASS today uh, at a special introductory rate and receive a free tackle pack. I love the old school tackle packs that you got. You usually got a spinnerbait on a BASS card, sometimes some soft plastics, a little handbook, and usually a spool of line. And how much was a one-year membership back in 1982? $12. <laughs> a lot of clothing. I think this is, uh, they must have rented out some space to this old Northwoods mail order catalog. <laughs> All right. I'm not going to talk about apparel too much, but look at that shirt. This is the old duo fold Norse net. A Scandinavian style open mesh knit body provides basic warmth uh, for the active man. I don't know if you can see this, Bass and Buds, but this, it's literally just a mesh in the middle. Oh my goodness. I, if I wore that around Lake Austin, I'd get jumped. <laughs> <sighs> Oh, here we go. A couple of nice spreads. So this one from Mr. Twister. Uh, nature jigs, hair and feather jigs, best imitate natural forage. Ooh, look at this. This looks like something my buddy Jay Worth would make, doesn't it? Look at that. That's a very uh, Jay Worth looking jig. And what is this? How bomber long A's have made me a believer. Uh, good looking spread of bomber long A. And by the way, do they make a bomber long A nowadays in that classic bomber fire tiger pattern? Because... If they don't, they probably should. Look at that. And I like this one, the old orange tiger. Or orange crawdad, I think is what it was called. In the back of the magazine, we've got a little one-page spread from old Evan Root. Looks like a couple of uh, old retro bass and buzz on the boat. Making beer cans float and probably doing a little bit of trespassing, huh? <laughs> well, bass and buds, hopefully you enjoyed this little walkthrough of the 1982 January edition of Fishing Facts Magazine. That was a super fun uh, walkthrough for me, and I think we have to do at least one or two more of these. We'll see how they go. I'll see you next Saturday, Bass and Buds. But until then, keep the carpet side up, and definitely fish it old school. Fishing it old school, this old stuff rules. Welcome to Retro Bassin'.